this model tank unboxing video. And the sharp-eyed amongst you would have seen that this isn't a tank at all. This is a small aircraft. Well, it's not a small aircraft. It's a 172nd model of a Bolton Defiant, which is a plane that was around in the early days of the Second World War. Quite an interesting little plane. I won't go into the history of it too much. You can look it up online. But they are quite fascinating. They're basically like a hurricane body, but with a gun turret on the back that might have been taken from a Lancaster or something like that. But what I thought I'd do before I started the video proper was just do a bit of a brief background on my modeling career. But if you want to jump straight to the unboxing, I'll put a timestamp at the top of the screen and you can go straight to it. So anyway, like a lot of um, teenage boys, I was quite interested in model making. And I used to do a lot of them, almost exclusively airfix kits, I think, and a few Ravel perhaps. And I used to paint them up and make little dioramas, etc. But last year, I was struggling to think of things that the family could get me for, for my birthday. Now, I happened to see these Airfix starter sets, modeling sets like this, that actually have the, the paint, the glue, the brush, everything you need to actually complete a model. In fact, I've got one here. This is a starter set for a Measuresmith 109. As you see, you've got the glue, the paints. There should be a brush there, but it's fallen out. This is just given to me at random by someone. I'm not particularly fond of Measure Smiths, to be honest with you, but um, I might make that. And these are really cheap. They're only about 12 or 13 pounds. So I would recommend picking them up if you've never made a kit. Um, it's a good way to start, hence the name for starter set. Anyway, I got the um, Bolton Defiant. Uh, enjoyed making it, had a good time. Good little model. So for Christmas, I asked for another modeling set. This time I was a little bit more ambitious. I got this beauty here. This is a Bristol Bowfighter. And unlike nearly all my other kits, this is a Tamiya kit. Tamiya is a Japanese company. And uh, no, again, very impressed. I had a good time doing this. Good kit, I think. And I think I did a good job. So after the Bowfighter, I was looking for yet another project. Well, I happened to be looking at a video from the Bovington Tank Museum. If you don't know the Bovington Tank Museum, it's in the, in the West Country in England. And I think it's the largest tank museum in the world or, or something like that. But they happen to mention this tank here, the British Light Tank Mark 6B. And the 6B is a tank that I must have heard of in the past because I, I have a, a passing interest in tanks. But it never really impinged on my consciousness, to be honest with you. And I was really quite struck um, seeing the sample they had in the tank museum in the, in the video. So I had a look around to see if they made models of them. And sure enough, I found this online. This is made by Vulcan, which is a company out of Hong Kong. And these particular kits aren't made anymore, apparently, because when I actually decided to get one of these, I checked a, a lot of online stores. And the few that had them were, were selling them for a lot of money. I mean, hundreds of pounds, it was, it was bizarre. <laughs> but I went on eBay and I was lucky to find one and I was lucky enough to get it for about 35 pounds, including postage. There are two Vulcan light tank models. Uh, there's this one, the B, and they also make the C. You see at the bottom here, it says Vulcan 2011. But there's a Vulcan 2012 kit, which has the 6C. So there was the original Mark VI, and that was changed slightly to become the A version, then changed slightly again to become the B version. And then they decided to put different guns on it, and that became the C version. So the guns you can see here are like uh, water-cooled machine guns. But I think on the C version, they changed those to air-cooled. Anyway, this will be the first tank kit I've made in a, in a long, long time. And my intention actually is to do a series of these. And the idea is that I'm going to do a series of tank models, but all the tanks are going to be quite early war. So the criteria is that the tank was either designed and or built before 1939, but did see sort of active service in World War II. So this is a very good example. I think this was originally designed and built in 1935, 1936. And at the start of the Second World War, this was apparently the most numerous of all the British tanks, but only being a light machine gun tank, it couldn't really hold its own against the, the bigger German ones. And these tended to be used as like armoured reconnaissance vehicles. And I think that nearly all the Mark VI tanks that were sent to France at the beginning of the war were lost, but they did slightly better in, in North Africa, in the North African campaign. So that's the plan. I'm going to find early war light tanks of other countries, like France and Russia, and make a whole series of them, see how they compare and I'm also going to try and get kits from different manufacturers. Like I said before, I've, I've only really made Airfix kits. That one Tamiya and a, and a few Revels. So this will be my first Vulcan kit. 
So let's look at the box proper. You probably already read this. Scale 1 to 35. Uh, ready to assemble plastic kit model. Modeling skill required. Ages 14 and over. Cement and paint not included. Falcon 2011. Look on the side. Uh, yeah, just more details. Falcon scale models, and they're based in Hong Kong, but they've got Japan Agent MS Models Limited. Uh, more stuff around the side here. We can see the original price of this kit. It's a modelsforsale.com for £20. Yeah, a bit more artwork to show you the painting schemes. And then the same up here, really. Oops. Now, when this was sent to me, um, it wasn't sealed. It was just open like this. So I admit, I did actually have a quick peek inside just to make sure it wasn't stuffed with old newspapers or something. But I haven't actually done more than that. So let's take a quick look. Here's the instructions. Uh, British Light Tank Mark 6B. During the interwar period, Vickers Armstrongs built a series of light tanks for the British Army and Light Tank Mark 6 was the final type. Compared to earlier marks, its turret was enlarged to allow for a three-man crew and extend at the rear to give space for a wireless set. An 88 horsepower engine gave the tank a maximum speed of 35 miles an hour. Its Horseman coil spring suspension system was found to be durable and reliable. However, the tank was short in relation to its width and pitched violently on rough ground, which made accurate gunnery a difficult task when the tank was moving. The first light tank Mark VI was built in 1936 and production ended in 1940 with approximately 1,200 built in four different types. The Mark VI B version weighed 11,650 pounds. The armour thickness was between 14 millimetres and 4 millimetres, so very lightly armoured indeed. Armament consisted of one water-cooled 303 inch and 1.5 inch Vickers machine gun. Yeah, so the machine gun you see on the left there, let's look at the box again. The machine gun you see on the left there, I think that's the 303. And the one encased here, that's the, the half inch. Let's go back to this. When the Second World War broke out, these were the most numerous tanks in the British inventory and they saw action in many campaigns during the early war period, including France, North Africa, Greece and Crete. And then we've got the instructions down here. Well, more instructions. And I think that's Japanese rather than Chinese. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Japanese. Let's open it up. Uh, do, you know, it's just plans of everything. Got the, um, the paint scheme. That's G3 and G4. And I happen to know that G3 and G4 are like standard army camouflage paints, or, or at least they used to be back in World War II. So... Um, I'm not sure if you can actually buy those or you have to mix them or what. But we've got, oh, we've got two color schemes there. We have got this one, and so uh, well, it doesn't actually say what, what the difference is really, does it? They're both using the same colors, slightly different patterns. Well, perhaps we get more information inside. Okay. Oh, here we go, the colour list. Right, so to make, right, G3, we, right, we can either buy Tamiya Colours, Mr. Colour, I, I presume that's a paint company, and then Life Colour. Uh, we've got lots of Tamiya paints. I don't know where to get those, so we'll probably use those. So yeah, we have to mix up different paints to make the um, G4 and G3. And then we need aluminium and black. I assume we need more than that as well. Oh yeah, brass, leather, metallic steel, wood, white, and red. Yeah, it always seems to need a load and loads of colors for these things. I think for the Bristol Bowfighter, there's like 25 um, different colors in the kit. And then additional ones you had to mix up using some of those colors you had to buy. So the instructions properly now. And then this round. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. I th oh, I said that. Look at this. Jeez. Right, we've got little springs, apparently. I'm looking at little springs there. I don't know if you can actually see that on the camera. So that'll be the suspension springs, the horseman suspension that we've got to try and recreate. Right. I don't 
think there's too much more to say about the instructions at this stage, is there? They seem quite clear, or rather, they don't seem clear. They never do. But once you get into it, this all seems to come together. Let's put that to one side. And then let's look at this. Oh, hello, what's that? Additional information for markings. Right, marking option one on page nine. Tank from 3RTR in Calais, late May. Marking option two, page 10. Third County of London Yeomanry with 77 Armoured Brigade and 2nd Armoured Division, Whittleford, Cambridgeshire, September 1940. So let's go back to the instructions. Come on, there we go. So this is page nine. So that's the Calais markings. And that's the Cambridgeshire markings on the right there, page 10. Um, okay, well, I don't know. I, I think I'll just try and copy what's on the box, which appears to be this one. Just having a very brief glance at the, uh, the cover art. Right. Yeah, it was nice of them to include the two patterns. Let's get into this. This is all sealed up. Oh, look. A little crafting mat. That's quite nice, isn't it? Cut this open. Okay, this is where I start losing things straight away. That just popped out. So that's the turret. Let's start putting these into boxes. All right, everything's in a sealed bag, which is quite good, I suppose. Yeah, everything looks nice and clean. Take my glasses off to have a proper look. Yeah, nice detail. It's, it's like a standard kit, really. Nothing terribly special. Okay, got a bit of suspension there. Yeah, there is a little bit of flashing here and there. I don't think there's anything too serious, though. It's a, it looks like the sort of flashing. I mean, like extra bits on the side of the models that you can just take off with your fingernail. On the whole, excellent, I think. Right, tracks, that's interesting. Because I've never made a tank kit before, to be honest with you. This would be my first tank kit. But I had made half tracks before, Airfix half track kits. And they tend to come with rubber tracks, rubber treads rather, that you just sort of, um, so you put the wheels on and then you then you wrap the, um, the rubber tracks around them. But these look like um, just solid. And there's lots of little individual ones here to, to stick together, which is looking very fiddly indeed. Hopefully you can actually see that. Right, so that's just all tracks on there. This is all the wheels. Looking good. Uh, I have no idea what this is. That will make sense at some point, I suppose. I'm guessing this is parts of the suspension. Some very, very tiny parts there. God. And there's this, which is a mystery to me. Right, I have no idea what that is. This is the hull. And we've got some really interesting looking stuff there. Let's get into this with that knife go. Right, it's a little tank, isn't it? God, tiny little tank. <laughs> but it looks you know, pretty sturdy, little hull. God, minuscule, tiny, tiny tank. All right, more to get in here. This is my trusty little Spyderco knife, my pocket knife, which I use for crafting. Yeah, if you're interested, I think that's called um, a Spyderco bug. And it's some sort of UK legal, so you can carry that around with you. Because it's non-locking and, and the blade is quite short. All right. Oh, God, I've got to this. As, all right, get into this as well. There we go. 
Oh, right, okay, I thought this was like a craft mat, it's not. <laughs> I thought this was like a little rubber mat, but it's just it's just card, which is a shame. I, I'm you know, disappointed by that. And this is all just stuck in here. Ah. Let's stick this. That just slots in. Right, there's the clear perspex. Um, let's try and get this one out. Right, it's all stuck together. Yeah, it's just the one bit of tape they put across. I should have spotted that. Come on. Right. Doesn't want to come off. Right, decals. Uh, yeah, not much there, but I wouldn't expect much for a tank. This is very interesting. Look, this is metal. I have no idea what you meant to do with that. And some of these pieces are just tiny, tiny, tiny. Gosh, I wonder where they go. Got some springs here. Well, I should have been a bit more careful with these. They look quite delicate. Because you've actually got some small springs and then even tinier springs. And you've got metal rods as well. Yeah, I was a little bit rough taking these out. Um, I should be grateful I didn't bend anything. Okay. And you've got this, which is, I don't know what that is. And then there is this. Come on. Yeah, right, I think that's the, the cupola. That's where the, uh, the guy driving the tank would sit. And that's it. That's all that. I'm now disappointed. I thought that was going to be a little rubber mat, but there you go. Now let's go back in the instructions and find out what we meant to do with these metal parts here, because I've never come across anything like this before. Where are the instructions? There we go, let's see if we can find those parts. Nothing there. Nope. Oh, here we go. Hold this round. Hold this up so hopefully you can see it. Yeah, there we go, right on the edge. It looks like we have to push out these bits of metal and then fold them up like they're little box kits or something like that. Well, that's really interesting. Okay, well, that's quite a challenge. Quite a challenge. Yeah, I think the most complicated part is obviously actually putting all the, uh, the wheels together and those springs. And I can imagine myself losing a few of those. So fingers crossed I won't. But that's it. That is the Vulcan kit. So what I'm going to do now is take this away and build it, and then we'll come back and see the finished product. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I shall see you in a few seconds. Okay, cheerio. Right, and hey presto, here we go. Here's the finished tank. It's been two weeks later, I think, since I made the initial video. And here's the finished little beauty herself. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Quite pleased with it, I must say. There's some mistakes here and there, but nothing terribly serious, I don't think. Looking pretty good. Well, I'll go through some of the things I'm less happy with later on. But that's a good overall view of the tank. Little Mark VI. Some nice details here with the tools. Uh, the shovel and some sort of thing at the back there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, you don't get rope with the kit. But I noticed just on the box art, there was some rope wrapped around that thing there. So I, I found some elasticated thread that was roughly the right size and painted it up. And put it around there. I think that looks pretty good. Quite nice. Yeah, the, the only thing I'm really unhappy about is, is the tracks. I mean, that profile is pretty crappy, really, isn't it? And it's worse on the other side. If I turn that around. It just doesn't look very good at all. Mind you, I don't, I mean, I think partly this is a kit because the tracks weren't very well formed. I had to do quite a bit of tidying up of the tracks, getting them out of the frames. Um, so I don't think the tracks are great anyway, but I don't think I did a terribly good job with them. Looks a bit of a mess here and there. 
No, unfortunate, really. I think that's the um, the only thing I'm really unhappy about is the tracks. Another slight criticism would be the lack of any internal sort of detail here down in the driver's bay. You can just see there's um, <laughs> a chair. That's it. There's nothing else down there at all. No sort of driving mechanism or anything, which is a bit odd, really, because when you consider the amount of detail that model makers put into uh, cockpit interiors. So for example, my Bristol Bowfighter, which I mentioned earlier, that had an, an awful lot of detail for the cockpit, 80% of which you couldn't actually see once you'd assembled the fuselage. And once you got the perspex on, you could, you could barely see the remaining 20% anyway. So it's a bit of a shame that they didn't actually add any sort of driving mechanisms or anything else there. There are two versions. Well, there's a number of different ways you can actually assemble these kits. You can have the front shut, these both shut or open. So as you can see, I've decided to keep this one closed and this one open. I might put a little figure in there. I did actually make make up a 135 human figure, which isn't painted, obviously, just to give you an idea of the scale. See what a tiny little tank it is. It's crazy. And three guys are in this. Yeah, you had the tank commander, machine gunner there, presumably, and the driver. But like I say, it's a shame that they've, they've given no thought to the interior at all. Something else that didn't come with the kit is this um, antennae here. This is just a bristle from a broom because the original antennae, the one in the kit, is just rigid plastic like that. And I thought that's, that's gonna last five seconds if I try and stick it on there. Um, that's just gonna snap straight away. I mean, it actually broke in the frame and I managed to repair it. But I was looking around for an alternative. And this is, yeah, just taken off a broom downstairs. Give it a couple of coats of paint. I think it looks very nice. In the end, I didn't actually use much metalwork. This is the metalwork plate that comes with the kit. Various boxes and things you can actually make up. But um, I'll show you in the instructions in a minute. For example, that is quite a simple lamp there. There's one on the other side as well. But there's an alternative build where you can actually sort of create something a little bit more elaborate. But the metal is quite hard to work with. I found it rather difficult. This is quite fun before I forget. This thing here, I couldn't figure it out. It's just this really weird sort of, it's a mirror, I'm sure it's a mirror. I've painted it up like a mirror. A little mirror on a stick. And the only thing I can think of is that that is something that the driver can use to actually see what is being signaled by the guy up here. I might be completely wrong in that, but that's the only practical use I can think of for having a mirror on a stick. <laughs> Which looks a little bit weird, to be honest with you, doesn't it? Another example of the grotty track build here. Quite unfortunate, yeah. I wish they just had, you know, solid rubber pieces that went all the way around. Yeah, bad joins. Yeah, a bit disappointed in that. I want to talk about the decals. The decals are okay-ish. Um, that one just sort of broke up while I was sticking it on. And this hasn't actually stuck on properly at all, this number six. There's a few, you know, like that rhino, that's not really stuck down properly. The decals are quite thick, which means they're easier to position, but they don't stick down as well as you'd like. But never mind. Yeah, I'll show you the instructions. So here we go. This is what I was talking about, you know, as far as having optional builds. So all this is metal work here. And you could have all that um, in this position here. This is the plastic bit here, which I've made. Or you can actually substitute all this stuff here. And it looks such a faff. And the metal is quite hard to work with because these pieces are absolutely tiny. And even getting them out of, the, um, out of this sort of frame without distorting them is quite a challenge. I mean, these bits here, these are meant to be rivet heads. Absolutely minuscule, as you can see. I mean, they're less than a millimeter across. So yeah, I've used some of it, but, but not very much. Um, yeah, really too small to be workable, in my opinion. I'll show you something else that's quite small as well. Here we go, these wheel assemblies. The wheels weren't too bad at the end of the day. Once you got used to it, once you saw the pattern, it was quite easy to put together. You see these pieces here, B3? There's lots of these 
pieces and they're, they're like sort of end pieces for these metal rods. But when you actually look for them in the kit, they are, where are they? Here we go. I meant to keep it to show you, but I threw it away. But this is a plan of the, uh, the kit. And what you get is these B3 parts just on a bit of plastic. Then you've got to basically try and trim it off with a, a scalpel. And again, just the bits of plastic are just tiny. It's less than a millimeter across. And it was just too much of a faff. So there were a few little bits and pieces like that. But it was just too much trouble, really. I mean, not many, not many. Mostly those B3 bits and the metal stuff. Yeah, so overall, quite pleased with everything. I'm not the best model maker in the world. But um, I think that looks rather nice. I think that looks pretty good. And that's the first in my light tank collection. So I'm going to do a series of these, as I mentioned before. And the next one I'm going to do, I'll just get it out and show you, is this. This is a Russian light tank. This is a T26. And the model maker is Zvezda. There you go, Zvezda. Well, I've never done a Vezda kit, so that'd be quite interesting. So I hope you'll join me for that one. There we go. Because Armstrong's Mark 6B.